I'm Drew Stevenson, and this is a lecture for my administrative law class about exemptions one and two to the Freedom of Information Act, or FOIA. Um, there are nine exemptions my students will remember, and this is where all the activity about FOIA happens, all the litigation, and so you really should focus on learning the nine exemptions. And we're going to talk about the first two here, and I'm going to go through those two exemptions and give two or three um, recent cases illustrating them. Again, I think that this is more useful than reading old cases from the 1970s or 80s about FOIA. We have a lot of development of the law since then, and it's also a, a little more interesting to see things that are happening uh, kind of right now or in the last few years. So let's go in um, to FOIA exemption one, and this has an A and B parts. So we're here located in 5 U.S.C. section 552B. For my students, remember um, APA 553 is where we get into notice and comment rulemaking. All of FOIA is basically embedded in the section right before that, 552. So here's our first FOIA exemption. This section does not apply to matters that are um, 1A, specifically authorized under criteria established by an executive order to be kept secret in the interest of national defense or foreign policy, and B, are in fact properly class classified pursuant to such executive order. So we usually call this the national security um, uh, exemption uh, to FOIA, that basically information that could affect national security. There's a little more to it than that, right? That we're, we're gonna have executive orders, and if you search in the annotated um, at the U.S. code annotated on Westlaw and bring up this exemption, you can actually find the executive orders that clarify what type of information um, is going to be classified as uh, necessary for national defense and foreign policy. And then also the B part is the government can't just willy nilly say, oh, national security, when they don't want to honor a FOIA request, they actually have to show that this in information was classified properly pursuant to an executive order um, that set forth uh, criteria for what kind would be kept secret. They don't have to disclose the information, but they will have to say this was classified. We did follow proper procedures here. Um, so here's a, I just want to do a couple of quick cases for you, and I don't expect you to remember these. These are just to kind of illustrate and clarify. There's actually a surprising number of cases about FOIA exemption one compared to some of the other exemptions. So this is from the DC Circuit Court of Appeals in 2013, and it's Judicial Watch Incorporated versus the US Department of Defense. The CIA here successfully invoked the FOIA exemption for classified material to preclude disclosure of post postmortem images of the preparation of Osama bin Laden's body for burial and the burial itself. So as you know, um, the, the US government conducted a raid uh, to execute Osama bin Laden or assassinate or uh, kill him, and then um, prepared his body for burial and they took some pictures and someone, uh, Judicial Watch, wanted the pictures to see how um, Obama, Osama bin Laden, sorry, um, body being prepared for burial. Um, and the CIA argued the release of the images would in fact hurt national security. And so this kind of highlights for you how the litigation works, you're probably going to have to articulate a reason. They describe prior instances in which reasonably analogous disclosures led to widespread and fatal violence, retaliatory killings, and things like that in the Middle East. So the government was withholding the images not to shield wrongdoing or avoid embarrassment, but to prevent violence against American interests and individual Americans in the Middle East. Here's a second exemption, or a, a second example of exemption one. This is also from the DC Circuit Court of Appeals from 2017. This is the Center for Public Integrity versus the US Department of Energy. The Department of Energy um, had investigated a government contractor for illegal lobbying activities. And they were given a FOIA request for information and they justified non-disclosure by invoking multiple exemptions for different information that was requested. And part of it was about exemption one. 
where they explained that some of the non-disclosed inf information pertained to security measures for a nuclear laboratory operated by the contractor and techniques for detecting missile attacks and, and even some vulnerabilities in government nuclear programs and, and, um, and detection systems and, and so forth. So this is, you almost couldn't get more national security than that, right? That this was a private military contractor that runs a nuclear lab and has some very classified information including information about our nuclear vulnerabilities and somebody was trying to get that through a FOIA request and the Department of Energy said no because of FOIA exemption one. Okay, last one for this exemption, I promise. This is from the District Court of DC in 2018, Bin Ali Jaber or Jaber versus the Department of Defense. And this was a FOIA request for documents relating to an alleged drone strike in Yemen by our government and the Department of Defense and other other agencies were not required to set forth classification levels of requested records. In other words, the person wanted, um, the requester said, you should have to tell me how classified, at what level of class classified this information is. And the court held, actually, they don't even have to say that. They don't have to state a classification level in order to say truly that the information was classified. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry I lied. There's one more. This is from 2020, the year that I'm recording this. And this is the ACLU versus the Department of Defense um, from the Southern District of New York. Um, admit, this is official acknowledgement of some of the information contained in agency emails discussing military options after intelligence gathering raids were conducted in a foreign country did not preclude withholding of the disclosure portions of the emails under the FOIA exemption for classified information. In other words, what the uh, requester was saying here, sorry, that's so awkward. Um, this, uh, um, the, I took this uh, from a case summary. The, um, uh, the ACLU was saying that if you've already acknowledged some of the information, you've opened the door, so it's not classified anymore under exemption one. And so a number of D Department of Defense declarants stated in sworn affidavits that the information that they were still withholding involved discussion of military tactics and strategy that would be far more revealing than the any, any prior disclosures or public statements of general fact by the Department of Defense uh, um, regarding this uh, particular raid. Okay, let's move on to exemption two. Um, this section does not apply to matters that are related solely to the internal personnel rules and practices of an agency. And so if you think about it, agencies employ thousands of people across the federal government, it's tens of thousands of people. And so they have all sorts of internal personnel rules about how they're gonna uh, um, give days off or um, uh, family leave and personal time and evaluate people for um, raises and promotions and things like that and uh, and so forth when they're going to reassign you to other tasks and so forth. And um, they want to protect our federal workforce and the agencies that um, they're not worried that they're, all of their HR practices are going to be uh, um, up for public review. And so we actually have a US Supreme Court case and this is one of our more recent ones before the one I've made another video about from 2019. This is from 2011. And this is kind of a fun case. It's Milner versus the Department of Navy. And the, this person wanted um, the blueprints or plans of a naval base and where they did testing grounds and wanted the government to show identify on the plans where they stored their bombs and explosives at night in the plans. Can you imagine that? Filing a FOIA request to want the layout of a um, Navy building and um, specifically where the bombs are stored. And so, um, and then the Department of Navy did something uh, kind of weird. They said that this falls under personnel rules um, because, um, are, you're basically asking where we have our soldiers stack the explosives at the end of the day when they're when we're closing up shop and um, and finish our exercises. And so the weird thing here is that instead of invoking the national security um, exemption under exemption one, 
which the court also said probably would have worked better, they decided to use the personnel um, uh, matters one. And so the Supreme Court actually rejected that and said, you can't use this one. If you want to try again with exemption one for national security, that's fine. Um, but they said exemption two is supposed to be narrow and applies to matters relating to hiring and firing, work rules and discipline, compensation and benefits, lunch hours and parking, and does not include information about the storage of explosives at a Navy testing ground offshore. And by, so part of why I'm highlighting this case is the Supreme Court really spelled out what exemption two applies to. Hiring and firing rules, work rules and discipline, compensation and benefits, lunch hours and parking, pretty mundane stuff. But the lower courts before Milner and before 2011 were actually applying Exemption 2 very broadly to include almost anything involving agency employees and their tasks. And some of it were to gotten around that this worked. And so they were just agencies were just using the thing that they didn't have to think about and say, well, it involves agency employees. So we're invoking FOIA Exemption 2 and um, saying that any documents were predominantly internal. And so courts had actually developed this, the lower courts, this, uh, the two-tier system of um, low two to refer to traditional personnel matters and then high two to refer to any other internal documents whose disclosure might facilitate circumvention of agency regulations. And the Supreme Court completely rejected this line of cases from the circuit courts. And that's something that you should know about FOIA is from time to time, uh, over the years, the uh, circuit courts sort of develop some common law or their own interpretations of these exemptions. And then we get a case that goes to the U.S. Supreme Court and they say no, uh, that all of these cases are wrong and tend to take a narrower and more literal view of the FOIA exemptions. And they should have, and basically the court here held that exemption two should apply narrowly to personnel matters. Okay, that concludes my lecture about FOIA exemptions one and two.